Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be kind of like the ultimate freshie guide for all of you UP freshmen out there. So this video is going to be very specific for UP freshmen but I will be sharing a ton of tips that I feel like will be useful to just freshmen in general. So if you're not a UP freshman, I hope you don't click out. So I'm going to be focusing on the classes and kind of like the enlistment process because I feel like that was what I was most confused about when I was a freshman. So let's start. How do the classes work? So basically, you get a list. So on that list is all of the major and GE courses that you have to take. And the goal to be able to graduate is to finish the list. Sounds easy enough, right? But it's a little bit more complicated than that. My most important tip for you guys is to always, always, always check that list, especially during enlistment period. I have met people who almost didn't graduate because they forgot to check the list and they found out on their last year that they didn't take this GE or that they forgot to take this major. And to avoid all of the hassle, just check your list frequently. Have one physical or digital copy of your list that you'll keep until you finish college. After each SAM tick off or like highlight or like cross off all of the classes that you've already taken so you know which classes are left. So what is enlistment, you may ask? So enlistment, uh, to define it briefly and simply, is the process of picking the classes that you'd like to take for this SEM. So again, sounds simple, but it's a little bit complicated and we'll get into that later as to why. But first, I want to give you guys an overview, I guess, of the whole enlistment process. So first, it starts with online enlistment and then you go into advising wherein you talk to your assigned advisor from your college and they guide you, help you pick classes and make sure that you graduate. And after advising, you go into manual enlistment. After manual enlistment, if you still need the need to get a certain class or even to just reach a certain number of units, the minimum, by the way, is 15 units per SEM, then you go into pre-rogging, all of which we will discuss later. Later. So online enlistment happens on the CRS website. So you will be given a username and a password to be able to gain access into that website. So always check it weeks before the next semester starts because you don't want to miss enlistment. I am telling you, you will go through hell and back trying to reach 15 units through manual enlistment. Also, check the CRS website weeks before your current semester ends because there is this thing called assessment. It's basically you assessing all of your current profs from all of the classes that you're currently taking. If you miss assessment, you will be tagged as low priority, I think, in the next semester. It's already so hard to get classes. Um, it's going to be so much harder if you're tagged low priority. So again, to save yourself from all of that, check the CRS website. Online enlistment is kind of like the lottery, I guess. You pick the classes that you want to take, but it is up to the system to decide whether you will get those classes or not. And how the system chooses which classes you get and which classes you don't is just random. It's just random. So it's like the fucking lottery. So there are two batches of online enlistment, but a lot of the times, a lot of the classes are already full right after batch one, and not a lot of classes are left in batch two. If there are classes left, most of the time, those are the classes that people are trying to avoid. Sometimes new classes open up during the second batch, but that's kind of rare in my experience. I know that all of that sounds terrifying, but I have good news for you and that is that you, my friend, are a freshie. And that means freshie priority. 
So even though the system is random, there are certain people that have priority, meaning they have a higher chance of getting the classes that they've picked. So there are four ways to gain priority. First is if you are a freshie, which if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you are. Second is if you are a registration assistant. I think athletes have priority. I'm not quite sure. I was obviously not an athlete. And fourth is if you are a graduating student. So obviously your majors are your majors. Those are courses that are specific to your degree program. And then you have your GE courses. So there are three domains where the GE courses fall under. So consider domains kind of like categories where the courses are grouped into. So you have SSP, which is Social Sciences and Philosophy, AH, which is Arts and Humanities, and my favorite, not really, Math, Science, and Technology. So your list will tell you specific major courses that you have to take, specific GE courses that you have to take, and all of your specific electives. But the list will also tell you how many units of free choice GEs and electives you're allowed to take. So as the name suggests, it is free choice. Just make sure that the course that you are taking falls under the required domain because your list will tell you that you need to take this many units of AHGEs or this many units of MSDGEs. So just take those required domains into consideration. Alright, so let's talk about your first semester. I don't know if this applies to everyone, but during my first semester, during online enlistment, the classes were grouped by blocks. And all I had to do was kind of pick a block. I had like my first choice block and then I picked a second choice block. And because I was a freshie and I had freshie priority, I got almost all of the classes that I picked from my first choice block. But that was only during the first semester of my first year. After that, there was no block anymore. I had to pick all of the classes that I wanted to take individually and I had to just organize my own schedule. Also, take note of prerequisites because those can sneak up on you, okay? So let's talk about that. So what are prerequisites? So there are certain classes that you will not be allowed to take if you have not taken another certain class beforehand. So for example, if I remember all this correctly, so Math 11 is a prerequisite to Math 14, meaning you cannot take Math 14 if you have not taken Math 11. But I think that's a bad example. I think Math 11 and Math 14 are co-requisites, meaning if you have not taken Math 11 before Math 14, you should be at least taking them at the same time, I think. But you guys get the point of what a prerequisite is. So just take note of all of the prerequisites of all of your required classes. Ignoring prerequisites can delay your graduation. You don't want to be on your fourth and last year and realize that you can't take a certain class because you have not taken the prereq so So during your freshman year, try to take all of the required classes that are of high demand because chances of you getting those classes are pretty high and chances of you getting those classes once you don't have freshie priority is pretty low. So please take advantage of your freshie priority. So here are some of the high demand classes that I recommend you guys to take during your freshman year. First is PE every single student is required to take four PE classes. Second are the GE courses under the MST domain. They are also extremely difficult to get and I think it's because there are only a few MST classes but the demand is so high because again so many students are required to take MST classes. Last but not least is what I like to call super GEs. There are super GEs that fall into two domains and believe it or not there are also super super GEs that fall into all three domains. So, okay, so we've talked about the do's, the things you should keep in mind when you're 
enlisting online. So now let's talk about the don'ts. I only have one and it is to not take a math, a physics, and a chem GE all together in one semester because you will die. If you are a genius and you still want to do this, go right ahead but I don't really recommend it because each of those classes will require a certain amount of study time. It's just a lot of studying that you'll have to do almost every day. Not to mention the exams. These classes are pretty exam heavy so I can't even imagine what a week would look like if you had an exam in math and then you had an exam in chem and then the week after that instead of resting you have an exam in physics. It's just not ideal. Everyone kind of knows about it, which is using the UP Profs to pick website. You guys, I was looking for the UP Profs to pick website, but it's not there. I have no idea why I had no idea that the UP Profs to Pick website actually got a cease and desist from UP. So the website right now is not operating because again of the cease and desist. But I will link down below Facebook groups and subreddits that I found that kind of do the same thing. I decided to still include this part of the video because what I shared with you guys will still be applicable to those Facebook and subreddits and to any other website that will be made in the future that will kind of be like profs to pick so I'm sorry that the website is gone ah. so basically it's a website where UP students kind of rate I guess is that an okay word to use and kind of review UP profs that they've already taken so you can use this website to check out the profs that are teaching the classes that you're planning to take see if they actually do teach see if they're strict when it comes to attendance or using your laptop in class to take notes or if they grade reasonably high or unreasonably low but take all of the ratings and the reviews with a grain of salt a lot of my favorite favorite profs have really low ratings on that website granted I do love a good terror prof it's funny because a lot of my favorite profs who were tagged as terror profs on the website I found that they weren't really terror profs at all if anything they were just strict and extremely passionate about their work and thus they just didn't want to deal with or tolerate students who weren't interested in their class you know you guys get what i mean Let's say after your online enlistment, you went into your college, talked to your advisor about all of the classes you're going to take, and he or she has given you their two cents on all of your plans. And now let's move on to manual enlistment. Manual enlistment is kind of like online enlistment, but it's not online. So it is physically going to the college that is offering the course or the class that you're planning to take, checking if they have slots to see if you could get it. So my tip for you guys when you are manually enlisting is to just plan out all of the classes that you're planning to manually enlist. So at this point, you already know all of the classes that you do have that you got through online enlistment. So the night before, do a little search on the portal, see which of the classes you would like to take, which of the classes fit into your current schedule. Make a little list of all your first choice classes, all your backup classes, you will also want to take note of the class code, I think is what you call it, and which college you'd have to go to to try to get a slot in those classes. It'll save you time, it'll save you energy, it'll save you that good, good coin because you wouldn't be wasting your barya on different ikot and talkie rides to get to different colleges without a plan. It's just gonna be a mess if you don't plan it out, so plan it out. Let's pretend at this point you are an unfortunate freshie and you still need a class. So that's where we get into 
pre-rogging. I don't even know if pre-rogging is an actual term, but pre-rog is kind of the term that we use to describe the process of begging the prof on the first day to please, please, please give you a slot and to let you into the class for the semester. The decision to open up slots and to let you into the class depends completely on the prof. And of course, profs have different reasons to let you in or to not let you into a class. I have pre-rogged so many times and it's a different experience each time. There are profs who will let as many students in as possible as long as there are still seats, like physical seats in the classroom. So kung may mauupuan ka, pasok ka na. There were profs who relied on the bunutan system. All of the people who lined up to pre-rog, all of their names would get written down on paper. And then bubunot siya. If your name got picked, you're in. If not, sorry. I have never experienced this, but I have friends who have told me stories about how they had to sing and dance in front of the prof and the entire freaking class just so that they could get a slot into that class. But at the end of the day, in my opinion, if it gets you into the class, fuck it, it's worth it, you know? Yeah, it can be pretty scary at first, but honestly, you'll get used to it. Just be ready for however the prof is going to handle the pre-rogging. Prepare to get rejected because there's a big chance that the prof just doesn't want any more students. So, so my other tips for pre-rogging is again, just plan it out. List all of your first choice classes. Have backup ones. Have all of the info about each of those classes. Also, it helps if you know how the professor looks like. I don't know if I'm a little bit crazy that I used to do this, but I would literally try to Google search how that professor looked like. And because a lot of the professors in the university are famous in their field, there will be a Google photo of them online. And it just really helped me knowing how he looked like. If he was passing by the hallway, I would be ready because, oh, okay, that's the prof. I don't know. It just helped me that I had a face in mind. Is that weird? I don't know. And my last tip for pre-rogging is to have Wi-Fi. Have your data ready. Just have access to the internet. Because chances are, even though you plan out how you're going to pre-rog as detailed as you can, a lot of things can go wrong and you're gonna have to make a lot of snap decisions. And to make those decisions informed and intelligent decisions, you need Wi-Fi. You need it to access the portal to figure out what class you can run to right now, where it is, who's the prof teaching it, and all of that stuff. So just remember that there is only one first day for each class. And usually that's the only day that profs accept pre-rogs. You're not the only student running around the entire fucking campus looking for a class to get into. So yeah, good luck if you are going to pre-rog. All right, so one of the stressful parts of the semester is over, which is enlistment. So on your first day, my only tips for you guys is to bring the following. Mid-SEM classes are basically the classes that you can take during the short break after the second semester of one school year and the first semester of the following year. So during a regular SEM, a GE class would usually be around one and a half hours, but during mid-SEM, it's going to be about three hours. Also, a GE during a regular SEM will usually be just for two days. It'll either be TT or WF but during mid-sem it's going to be from Monday or Tuesday I think all the way to Friday so it's obviously more hours than usual and it's obviously more days than usual and it's only because you obviously have less months in a mid-sem compared to a regular sem but there are so many benefits to taking mid-sem classes so first is it takes load off of your regular semester so for example for this certain semester, you will need to take five classes. Because you took one of those classes during mid-sem, 
during that regular SEM, you'll only take four. And of course, four classes is much easier, a lot more manageable compared to five classes at the same time. Also, from personal experience, I've found that min -sem classes are a little bit more chill. The vibes during min -sem are just a little bit different. And I think maybe it's because in the University of the Philippines, Diliman, a lot of the times it's always rainy during min -sem and it's just a lot more chill. I don't know, that's a very specific experience to me, but let's just say that I've never had a stressful mid -sem. Last but not least is my favorite reason to take mid -sem, which is and it's just an excuse to go out during summer. I feel like a lot of us have those parents who question where we're going during summer because they just know na lakwacha siya. They just know that it's just a hangout with friends. But if you have a class, you can always say that it, you're going to a class, which you should be. But I don't think they're gonna ask about what you're gonna do after the class. Now, I am recommending you guys a class that I think you should take during mid-sem, and that is NSTP. So, NSTP is required for everyone, and taking it during mid-sem really worked for me because I just took NSTP for just one mid-sem as opposed to two regular SEMs. Isn't that insane? It's just two months of NSTP as opposed to eight months of NSTP. Alright, so I think that concludes it for this video. If you have any more questions, just ask in the comment section down below. I do my very best to reply to every single comment. Also, if you aren't a freshman and you're still watching this and you know that I missed out on a couple of important tips, maybe comment them down below help a freshman out. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know this video was super long, but thank you if you've made it up to this point. Please, please subscribe if you have not done so yet. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!